That brings us along nicely to Cork because they've obviously been in Division 3 football this year but because they've won five games from five um, Ronan McCarthy, the manager feels quite confident that they're through he says I think 10 points will get us there of course it didn't I think it didn't for down last year but um, mm. how do you feel Cork have been going this year? You know what what can you say I mean they've done what they had to do which sounds very boring, but it's, that's pretty much what it is. I mean, they were in Division 3. They weren't going to get any credit for winning these matches. They were going to get plenty of criticism if they didn't. So they went out, went about it. There's plenty of stuff you can pick at. I mean, even the Derry game at the weekend, they were they were comfortably superior to Derry. Um, but by two points, conceded goals later on. Um, you know, you're going to get that with a team like Cork, uh, developing a lot of young players in, players in there. Um Problem for them, obviously, going forward, is that they're going to have a springtime playing Division Three teams. Then they'll play. I know. I think it's. I said, is it Limerick? They have in the first round. I think I could be could be open to correction there. But whoever they play, it won't be a Division One team until Kerry. Um, and then we are we are where we are, you know. So like they have, they have, they've they've been doing okay. They've been doing fine. Um, you can see. You can see good things in the team. Um, they've that have that have come on from last year. Um, but I mean, look, looking at Division Three before it started, I would have thought that there was maybe three or four games where Tip where Cork could have come unstuck. The first game against Offaly, Offaly have actually been going quite well. Uh, you know, they had a bit of momentum behind them coming into the league. I heard that you know, soundings were that they'd had a good preseason. They were happy. Um, Cork did well to win that game. They won against Down at home. That was a key match. Tip are always a difficult game for Cork at the moment. Um, that turned into a right contest, and they but they came out the right side of that. And then Derry, again, Derry would have come in with strong hopes for this year. Haven't hasn't really come together for them yet, I don't think. So they did the job there. They needed to get those. They needed to get those wins on the board. They have Longford as their last game. I've seen a lot of Longford over the years, and they're a very. They always have good footballers. And they're always capable of causing trouble. Longford's problem always has been physicality. They don't have enough big, strong boys to kind of go to the next level. But they're perfectly capable of taking someone out. So, look, Cork have done what they had to do. They have, obviously, they've got some very good young players coming through. But they're also, I mean, I was talking to Paul Kerrigan uh, earlier on in the league. And he was making the point like that, it won, you know, over the last bunch of years, Cork have had different strength and conditioning trainers almost every year. So, I mean, they're starting again now with a new kind of system, a new setup, um, and it's going to take time. It's going to take time, particularly for these young players, to come up to the level and be, be at a level where they can be consistent. The nature of the way the championship is, is, is arranged, Super 8s, obviously, is, 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 an achieve, is, is a target for them, um, but it's not necessarily the case. I mean, look, they, they went well in the Super 8s last year, but really they didn't get the win probably against First Common that they would have hoped to get. So they'll be looking, what, you know, what can you expect from them this, this summer? You're probably looking for another performance along the lines of what they gave against Kerry last year, keeping in mind that Kerry will be the first Division 1 team they play this year. And that'll be in June in the Munster semi-final. Uh, and then after that, you're kind of hoping for get to the Super 8s and see how you go. Because it's actually the first game in the championship is Kerry in that semi final. All the all the other teams are on the other side. I just checked there. You'd like to think you'd, 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 you'd like to think I keep up with these things, wouldn't you? But it, I think it's actually like a player. <laughs> Someone would often say to him, "Well, who are you playing this weekend?" And you just you probably know vaguely. I'm playing on Saturday, and people think you're mad yeah. that you don't even know who you're against or the exact time. Well, well I think it's I think this time of year, particularly in this job, you do it's particularly in the football league. The football league is so active and competitive at all levels. You sort of. Um, you kind of almost put the championship to one side in your head. And I'm, not, and I'm not using that as an excuse. Well, I am using that as an excuse, actually. But, uh, right. <laughs> but, but you know, it's, it's, you, it is very competitive. And uh, more so than the hurling, what's going on in the Football League now will have an impact and will have an influence on what happens uh, in the football championship. Um, I thought it was interesting that Ronan McCarthy, he was talking about the potential of Cork. And, you know, because they've kind of slid so much, people probably aren't considering the players that they've been missing you know Kieran Sheehan is back this year we'll see how he goes and there was a quote from Ronan where he goes people talk about Kyle McShane and Matty Donnelly being out for Tyrone but the lo likes of Sean Powter and Brian Hurley have been massive mm. massive misses for us So, and that, that's a fair point like those are two guys that are probably comparable at that level Absolutely and they feed into the kind of game that Cork will want to play 
I mean, Cork will want to play a fast moving mobile game, probably ball in hand. Sean Potter, straight out, straight away, you know. I mean, he's been, he played very well against Derry at the weekend. And he's been going well. Kieran Sheehan, I mean, I'd say he's probably the only footballer in Cork who's happy to be in Division 3 because it's given him the opportunity to wear himself back into the into the inter-county game, you know. And he, again, first couple of games, played really, really well. So, yeah, Ronan's right. And I mean, you know, if you look over the history of Cork football in the last decade, it's been pretty bleak. Uh, particularly in the last four or five years, but they have been extremely unlucky with some of the players that they've they've lost either to Australia, like Kieran Sheehan, through injury, like Poster, the Hur- and Brian Hurley, uh, and then retirements and stuff like that. Guys who maybe could have stayed on a little long could have been kept on that weren't. Um, you know, but look at that's just the way it is. You gotta you gotta roll with the punches, and they're in an unforgiving situation that they play Kerry every year. So if it's not, they they don't get a break. They don't get a chance. So. Um, but it, yeah, like they have they they have guys back now. They have a very good base of young players again, a bit like 06, 07. Um, they'll have a few years now of working through this, and you would hope, from a Cork point of view, and I know the Kerry are hoping it as well, that that Cork will be a lot stronger um, in in the next 2021, 20, 22, and going forward. What are your What are your thoughts on on how the league is shaping up? Obviously, with with kind of one eye in the championship now, even though we don't know when the fixtures are in the championship, of course. But uh, what are your thoughts on where Dublin are at? Because the getting to a league final is out of their hands now, and the, you know they've been falling behind heavily in games, and you know they still have that. Whatever it is, is, is it that sort of never say die attitude, that residual thing there that they just don't give up and they've come back in both in most games. Where, where do you think they're at? I'd say they're probably relaxed enough with life. Um, like I, I have been at a lot of their matches, and it's extraordinary that muscle memory that they have to just dig themselves out of situations. And I think it's in the other crowd's head as well, as well that you're never you don't never have the game won against them. So that helps Dublin obviously along the way. Um, Again, the thing that I noticed last year about Dublin, and they, did, they didn't have a great league last year either, um, they, the only players that they brought through were, you know, they brought back Rory O'Carroll, you know, um, they brought back Connolly. There was no bolter, you know, there was no, and I know we're talking about, a, I'm going to mention a couple of exceptional names here that you can't expect every year, but you get the point I'm trying to make. There was no Con, you know, there was no Fenton coming through, there was no Merchant, um, not even a, like a Carmel Costello, you know. Uh, there, was uh, there was nobody just kind of coming out of the pack, right? This year, you look at Sean Bugler. Uh, I think he's probably, probably the guy. Uh, but there'll be others. There, there'll be others. Conor McHugh has got a couple of runs. But Conor would have got runs with Dublin in the league in the past. Conor um, Baskell to some degree also. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, there are names like that that we're all, they're all familiar with. And I think they will all play. They will all get their get, get play their role. Certainly in Leinster, and we'll see what they'll be like. Dublin won't be in the slightest bit worried about things. Like they, I mean, the Tyrone game was a bit of a. I mean, you saw the conditions. Uh, I mean, whoever was going to win that match, obviously, you'll take a lot in terms of resilience and and strength of mind and character and will to pull the thing out, of, pull the thing out of the fire and win it. But in terms of a comparable game, when Dublin play Tyrone again, if they do in the summertime, it's total t- not at all comparable. Um, Dublin have looked good. Any time I've seen them, yeah, they've they've let teams off. I mean, the Monaghan game was extraordinary. I, like that really was sort of um, they, that was the poorest Dublin performance I've seen in a, quite a long time. But at the same time, uh, again, you'd wonder what kind of work they're doing, what kind of load they're doing. Um, they're getting used to a new manager. The new manager's getting used to the setup and the and, and, and the scene as well. Personally, I think they changed. Also, they changed the rule at the weekend where uh, Crow Park is no longer seen as a neutral venue for the Super Eight. So, so Dublin could be could be on the road one more time in the year. Um, I've I've not I've never bought into the idea that Dublin are unbeatable. Um, if you look at if you look at the nature of some of the, the wins that they've had in All Ireland finals in particular, they've been very close. Um, I think that they're always if a team gets it right on the day and if Dublin dip, it's there. It's there for the opposition. I think Kerry will obviously look at. It's it's obvious, like you know. I mean, Kerry are quite a bit ahead of everybody else. I think in terms of challenging Dublin, um, but again, Tyrone maybe in that regard, even though the game is kind of incomparable in, in going forward, Tyrone did show that if if you have the will and the absolute ironclad sort of um, stubbornness to stay with them and and not be kind of intimidated or cowed by the by the blue jersey and the people in having those blue jerseys, you can you can make an effort. You you can get places against Dublin, you know and. 
if ever they're going to be vulnerable, it's going to be this year, I think. Um, you could even see it in the reaction to the All Ireland last year. They were sort of, it was a lot. They were a lot. It was almost like a weight off them. And I just wonder now, without that push behind them when it comes to it, uh, are they are they vulnerable to getting caught? That's it's a, probably that's, a silver that's, that's bullet a, situation. Get them once, you know. That's an interesting one because. Um, I think the term used when, when Inter Milan won the Champions League in 2010 after beating um, Bayern Munich, it had been this thing that they have build, building up to for a long time, you know, players like, I suppose, Schneider and a few more. I can't remember all the players off the top of my head. But there was some comment made by one of the players because, you know, they went to pot after that. They, you know, they didn't, they didn't mm. challenge for it again. The idea that when they finally achieved it, they kind of expired on the field. So it's a bit of a dramatic yeah. way to put it. But I wonder, is there a possibility? And we're always kind of, there's a bit of wishful thinking because we want a competitive championship. But maybe there is some aspect of that. I think there's something, there has to be something human there <laughs> in the sense that like, you know, look, you know yourself. Like, I mean, if you're competing for all Ireland's over and over again for a, a successive number of years, even if like Dublin, you're winning them and you're making it look easy at times, there's a huge amount of work goes into making it look that easy. And at some point, mentally, you're going to get stale. You're going to get tired. Physically, you're going to start feeling it in the legs. And it's only natural that you're going to dip. Whether that happens this year with the five in a row now secured in one or whether, whether they drive on and win six. I mean, to me, it, it feels like one of those Kerry type situations where they may well lose this year and come back and win two in a row again. You know that sort of way? That they possibly need an edge now. Where is the edge for Dublin now? Like, where is the edge? I mean, tip hurlers have, have always had the edge because, you know, it's always been one in a row. So they're always coming back with something on their back. Um, you know, Kerry have, have the edge that there's all sorts of, I mean, they've, Kerry have just gone through the worst decade in terms of All-Ireland final retur- All-Ireland title returns uh, in their entire history, apart from the 90s. They won one in the 90s and they won one in the, in the 10s. Like, that's uh, ever since they won their, their first one back in 1903. So, I mean, they're wrong with a 24-7 edge um, all these teams that are chasing them are all hungry um, if Dublin if feel in any way satisfied with what they have that gap I'm telling you and you look at Galway the likes of a Galway coming as a bolter I mean if Dublin were to meet Galway as much as Dublin will tell themselves they're ready for Galway the likes of a Galway they mightn't be entirely 100% ready if Galway came with its particular kind of uh, kind of performance and was getting the best out of Shane Walsh and everybody was playing up to their max it's kind of game that could. Uh, it's kind of game that could really trouble Dublin and really make them think. I mean, I put it this way: if they were to go 10, 11 points down in a championship game in Crow Park, even the way they're doing is Monaghan, I'm not so sure everybody would be com- confident that they'll come back. A question about Galway, actually, and, and I know there's some some factors that are a little bit different last year because um, you know Kevin Walsh would have had to had the Cara Finn guys away until March, whereas this year Park Joyce gets them in a little bit sooner. But in a general, in the general sense of things, he's got the exact same players, and I, I'm not sure I've ever seen a team flick a switch overnight to go from being a very dour team who I really don't even want to watch play football to all of a sudden being exciting to watch, winning football, and I I drive a fair distance to go and watch him play. Jesus, that's saying an awful lot now. Nor a nor tip hurling man driving to see Galway play football. I'm a good football like- man too. County minor <laughs> title winner 2000, fair enough it was B. But uh, I know, I do. I, I hey, B counts. B counts. B counts. I have a county minor <laughs> B hurling medal there somewhere, so that all counts. Anyway, um, back to Galway. Like they, I think what possibly happened with Galway um, back in over the last few years with, with, with Kevin Walsh and, and with the style of play he wanted. In fairness to Kevin, he took over Galway at a point where they were leaking scores, they, were, they looked weak. They really weren't. They had a they had a relatively limited panel of players that you needed to create a template for, fo- for a, a tactical template that you could get the best out of what was a fairly limited pool of players at the time. So he went down this road of sort of uh, uh, utilitarian football, if you like, sort of uh, football by numbers and 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 trying to mould Galway in a certain way. And you could see it, and all the conversations with people down there all the time. The players had to really concentrate on what they were doing because it wasn't a natural style of play for them. Now, I'm a bit allergic as well to this idea that counties have natural styles of play, but I do think there is something to it that if you can get them playing a style that they've grown up with as kids and that they've watched, obviously that's going to be easier for them to do. So in this case, I think Galway kind of got caught, got, it just got 
wrapped up in knots a little bit. Um, they never looked comfortable playing the way they did. But at the same time, I suppose they had gone so far down that road that it was very hard to turn the ship around again. And equally, better players were coming on stream and players were maturing and guys were showing certain abilities that maybe the, pre, the, the panel that Kevin would have had originally didn't have. So it was a difficult, it's been a difficult period for them. Like, I mean, you know, they were able to completely shut Mayo down with that style of play that they had. And I mean, that was a Mayo team that was going for all Ireland at that time. So, I mean, you know, there was, there was, there was merit to some regard to what they were doing. It was, a, I suppose they just needed wins for self-belief, but now they have that self-belief. And I suppose the issue coming into this year with a new manager was, okay, we need to find a style of play that's going to move us forward. I am a strong believer that mass defence does not, I mean, people can argue about Tyrone winning all Ireland with mass defences. Tyrone won all Ireland because they had six unbelievable falls back at that time. And it's still, it's the one saving grace of football is that you still, the team with the best forwards nearly always wins the All-Ireland. Even Donegal back in, 20, in 2012, you look at the forwards they had back that time, superb forwards, right? Um, that's what wins your games. That's what Galway have. They have some excellent forwards. As you say, it's marrying that sort of defensive rigour and that hardness as well. I think, I mean, back when Galway were winning All-Ireland 20 years ago, you had, you know... Tomas Mannion in there and these guys who were really, really good technical footballers, but they were hard as nails. You know, they were made a wire, some of these lads. And, you know, they need to get that back into their team as well. They need that sort of, they need to bear their teeth around the middle a little bit. They need to show that kind of, and that's, that's a part of Galway football that's as much a part of winning Galway teams as the stylish footballers that you get the likes of Shane Walsh now at the moment. But I think that, look, it's good to see them going well. Um, and they need, they're a, they're a team that you could say, you know, they need a good league would be good, good for them. Thanks for watching our game. Don't forget to like and share the videos. And if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe.